think we are up and running for a live video chat on the Total Fitness Bodybuilding YouTube channel. Hey there, how's it going? My name is Lee Hayward and what I'm going to be doing now is over the next hour I'm going to be hanging out here on the Total Fitness Bodybuilding YouTube channel doing a live stream video Q&A. So if there is anything that you would like to discuss with regards to building muscle, losing fat, uh, getting in shape, any specific uh, challenges that you're dealing with when it comes to your workout or your nutrition program, anything like that, feel free to type those questions into our chat window and I'll do the best that I can to help you out over the course of our video chat today. Now, uh, before we get going, I just want to make sure that this is coming through loud and clear, that you can hear me, that you can see me, and all that good stuff. So for those of you who are tuned in live right now, can you hear me? Can you see me? Is this coming through? Please, please let me know. Alright, let's see. Let us see. Okay, just want to make sure. It seems to be coming through uh, fine on my end, but we have a new system in place here now with with the, the streaming software from, from, uh, from YouTube. So I want to make sure. Okay, it's coming through loud and supposed to be loud and clear there from Ross okay all good gotcha awesome really appreciate it now I, I know for the uh, the last oh gee couple weeks now I've been a bit uh, off my game so to speak when it comes to uh, doing these live chats and the, the the reason for that is I've I've been partaking in a, a new venture a new challenge and it's been going quite well if you've been following along with my website and following along with me on Facebook, I, I've done something very unique recently, and it was to have a lose your gut challenge on Facebook, where I literally took a group of guys through a challenge where I, basically it was the first phase of my my one-on-one -on -one coaching program where I personally took them through how to go about setting up their mindset, their training, their nutrition to really optimize losing fat, building muscle, and getting in shape. And the feedback that I've gotten from this was was huge. I mean, it was so positive, and the results were were impressive. I mean, literally in the matter of a week, we see guys like dropping five pounds in their first week. And the thing is, it's not just that initial quick fix fat loss, like anybody say, oh, well, anybody can lose five pounds, or it's just water weight or whatever. But people are continuing to lose body fat and continuing to get leaner, I mean, in a very short period of time. So it just goes to show that once you make the mindset shift and you start implementing these habits, you can make progress on a consistent basis. So now what I'm in the process of doing is taking it to the next phase of the Lose Your Gut Challenge. And I'm in the process of putting together a group coaching program for people who've went through that, that five, or that was a five day challenge, even though we've extended it on now well beyond five days. But I'm in the process now of creating a four-month group coaching transformation for people who want more help and to really take this to the next level. So we've got a group of guys who are all ready to go, and I'm going to take them through a real-time transformation over the next four months. And I'm going to be sharing that uh, through the Facebook group. I do a lot of interaction through Facebook uh, because I find that that is a very cool means. So if, if you haven't been following me on Facebook head on over, do a search for, for Lee Hayward. Uh, I have a private uh, Total Fitness Bodybuilding Facebook group that you can request to join if you want to follow along and get some more information about it. But right now, we've got a four-month advanced Lose Your Gut Challenge group who are going to be starting very soon. And I'm super excited to take this group of guys. It's going to be 10 guys that I'm taking through this challenge and to really see some some big transformations over the next four months. I mean, we've seen some huge progress in the matter of a week. I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do now over the course of four months. And I'm really excited for these guys who have jumped on board. And we got a few of them here joining us now for the video chat. So this is going to be fun. This is exciting. I, I'm looking forward to, uh, to sharing some more success stories. And that's what I'm doing. I'm doing this because I want to create some success stories. There's nothing I like more than to be able to feature people who've who've been struggling with their health and fitness, struggling with losing that gut and trying to get in shape and then to be able to feature those people as success stories because they finally got their shit together, right? They finally got a system in place that works and a system in place that is maintainable 
and one that allows you to actually enjoy the process because it's that's the thing when it comes to bodybuilding fitness diet exercise like i can give you the most extreme workout program like i can tell you right now hey eat nothing but chicken and broccoli and work out two hours a day and do that every day for the next four months and i guarantee you if you have the willpower and the dedication and the, and the, the you know the just the the, <laughs> the the guts the tenacity to stick to that you would lose weight you would get in shape you would you would see remarkable progress but the problem is your life would be a living hell because willpower is a finite resource it does not last sooner or later if you follow one of these ex crazy extreme diets you are just going to get fed up with feeling hungry all the time you're going to get fed up with the the deprivation and, and just the stress that it causes and sooner or later you're just going to snap you're just going to snap give in to those cravings you're going to say the hell with this diet i'm sick and tired of it i just want to eat and, and feel good and you're going to give in to those cravings and it's just all out the window and chances are you've probably already done this to some degree or another right i mean i know i have I mean, all my years of competitive bodybuilding, it was extreme yo-yo dieting. That's, that's what it was. Now, granted, it works in the short term. And I mean, I was able to get myself in shape, get some great photos, look good for the contest, you know, place well in some cases. I mean, I, I've even won my division. I've even won the overall title back in, back in the day in some of the competitions that I did. But it's not sustainable. So what I've done is I've actually come up with a system using some of the core principles that I've utilized through competitive bodybuilding, but adapted it to make it a lifestyle approach. And now I'm, I'm happy to say that I've got a good system in place that allows me to actually enjoy the process. So I'm not killing myself in the gym. In fact, I go to the gym three days a week max. That's it. Sometimes I don't even get to the gym three days a week and I end up doing like a body weight workout or like a dumbbell workout or something like that at home. But it's not a crazy schedule to follow. Like three, three workouts a week. I mean, I think anybody who's half committed to their health and fitness goals can manage three workouts a week. As far as the nutrition is concerned, I'm not crazy strict. Like I'm not on some low carb diet. I'm not following some, you know, anything extreme. But I have a system in place that allows me to eat so that I get eating satisfaction. I leave the table feeling comfortably full and actually enjoy the way that I eat. But I'm fueling my body with good quality nutrient dense foods. And I still make room for a bit of junk food and, and, and cheat meals in there. But I make it fit within my weekly totals. And that's the thing. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to learn how to manage it over the course of the week so that you average a slight calorie deficit over the long term right you can still have a few binge me you know a few few cheat meals go off track go out to a restaurant have a family dinner whatever last weekend was my son's birthday party i i went to the birthday party i ate pizza i ate cake uh, i ate sandwiches i enjoyed myself i didn't count calories or track macros or anything like that and i'm still losing weight and getting in shape Right? I have a system in place that works really well, and that's what I'm going to be taking the guys now through the next four months in the advanced Lose Your Gut Challenge group. And I'm super pumped, super excited to be sharing that. And you can look forward to seeing some of those uh, results in real time as they start happening. I'm going to be sharing it. So that's what I've been up to. So like last week, there was no video chat here because, uh, because of my son's birthday party. And in fact, his, his birthday was on Friday. The day we had the video chat and I, I did actually post saying okay I'm gonna try and do a video chat on Friday last Friday and by the time I got around ready to go we had family like we had nanny and poppy and a bunch of, of relatives coming over to, to celebrate Harvey's third birthday and I'm like I, I can't leave all our guests you know ignore them so I come in here and do a video chat I'm like you know I, I love my video chats but come on family is priority number one especially when it's your son's birthday party so I'm like I can't ignore everybody so that's why there was no video chat last week even though I did make a post saying that I was going to have one and I, I do apologize for any of you who actually did show up and you're like what the heck's going on like where's Lee he's normally here every week last weekend was an exception right you know my son only turns three once so I wasn't going to miss that but I'm here this week, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to dive in, answer any questions, do the best I can to help you out. So 
If you have any questions that you would like to uh, discuss with regards to workouts, nutrition, any specific challenges when it comes to losing fat, building muscle, uh, injury prevention, stuff like that, go ahead. This is your opportunity. So please feel free to post those in our video chat window and I'll do the best that I can. Uh, in addition to that, if you're brand new, if you've never been to a live Lee Hayward video chat before, let me know. Type in the letter N in the video chat if you are new. This is your first time ever tuning in because I want to welcome you. It's always nice to have new people joining in. And if you're a regular, you come on to these video chats all the time. Maybe you've been following me for months or in some cases even years. Type in the letter R in the video chat window there and let me know if you are a regular. All right, so let us jump right in. Actually, first I'm going to grab a sip of water before I go any further. Keep the whistle wet. Shit, this thing is leaking. I got water spilled down over my shirt. Oh well, who cares? <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Who do we got? We've got uh, Deddy2012. He's, I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, he says, nice timing as I was sat there on my phone. Okay, welcome to the video chat, Deddy. We have Kyle joining us. He says, am I early? No, you're right on time. If you're here, you're on time. We have Steve, and we have Wayward Work, Way, Way, <laughs> Wayward Woodworker joining us. Prisoner of the Highway. Hey, Lee Hayward, can you suggest or make a video for us truck drivers who want to stay fit on the road? Awesome. Actually, let's talk about that right now. Uh, for just a disclaimer, I'm not a truck driver, <laughs> right? But uh, I, I can relate to the, the challenges that you're going through because when I travel, I know how difficult it can be to stay in shape when you are, uh, you're, you're outside your element, right? You're, you're, you're traveling, you're eating out in restaurants, you don't have a consistent schedule to follow. It can be challenging for sure. Uh, one thing that I would recommend uh, in, in your case, one, when it comes to the workouts, if possible, try and go to different gyms. And what I mean by that is, is when you're traveling, chances are there's probably going to be gyms in most towns or cities that you travel to, right? You, you know, if, if you're, go in and get a day pass and work out. Like I say, three days a week. If you can commit to three workouts a week, you can make progress. And on the days that you can't work out, Try and do some sort of exercise just to keep yourself active. Even if it's just going for a walk, maybe it's doing some body weight exercises. I know a lot of truck drivers that I, that I have helped in the past keep like some rubber resistance bands, uh, maybe like an exercise mat or something like that in their truck so that when they are in a jam, they can still do some exercise and keep fit. I mean, it's amazing what you can do with just a set of adjustable rubber resistance bands, or at least have multiple sets so that you have light tension, medium, and heavy tension bands. I mean, you can do pretty much a, a total body workout with just a set of bands. You know, so that's one thing that I would definitely recommend. And if you want, uh, you can actually do a search on my YouTube channel. I have some videos showing uh, rubber resistance band workouts. Uh, just do a search for like Lee Hayward home workout or Lee Hayward home gym workout. You should find them there. Uh, when it comes to your nutrition, this is going to be the tricky one. This is the tricky, but you can still make the best of your situation. One that would definitely, one thing that would definitely help uh, when it comes to eating and while you're traveling, uh, keep some some of the basics on hand in your truck, like a container of protein powder and a shaker cup right? That, that goes a long way. Keep some fresh fruit in there, you know, apples, bananas, oranges, pears, whatever. Keep that kind of stuff there. And if you're in jam, you can have a protein shake and a piece of fruit. I mean, that is a good, healthy meal replacement option. And that could easily prevent you from stopping into the gas station or the truck stop and grabbing, you know, a, a bar, a bag of chips or, or, or whatever kind of junk that they offer in the truck stops and then the gas stations. Because you, you go to most gas stations, I mean, it's just loaded with with processed crap. So if you can keep some st staples on hand with you at all times, it prevents you from having to resort to that. Uh, when you're eating out in restaurants, start with a large garden salad. Most places you go to will allow you to get a garden salad. If not, you can stop into places like a Subway or any of these, like a Chipotle or, or some, some sort of place that offers salads. 
start off with a garden salad probably get a chicken breast chopped up in there I mean a chicken salad is a great restaurant meal that is very lean and healthy I mean it's the kind of same kind of stuff you would eat if you were at home but you can get that while you're traveling on the road um, other things fill up on the protein and veggies first so whatever like if, if you're eating at a buffet for example right instead of filling up on the crap fill up on protein and veggies so again lean meats uh, lean fish chicken beef whatever that kind of stuff fill up on the protein get generous portions of vegetables steamed vegetables stir fried vegetables salads fill up on that nutrient dense foods first and then that will naturally pre-fill your belly so that you're less likely to overeat on the other stuff afterwards and this is a strategy I use myself even when I'm eating at home I always fill up on protein and veggies first get the eating satisfaction get the hunger controlled with that and then if I do eat some not so healthy foods afterwards the, the portion sizes are greatly reduced because I'm already pre full with the good stuff drinking lots of water right I know that's sometimes a bit awkward when you're traveling but keeping yourself good and hydrated great way to uh, help to control your appetite plus it also helps to keep your muscles hydrated and just makes you healthy overall because let's face it muscle is like 75 percent water if you get dehydrated you're going to see a drop in your uh, performance uh, you're going to feel a drop in in your fat burning i mean keeping yourself hydrated just helps to optimize the entire process right you might have to keep piss jug in the in the truck with you right you know so when you're when you're on the road you might have to uh when nature calls right you might have to do that but uh you know m make the best of it for sure but those are a few tips that can definitely help and uh, if you want you can even go back to one of my youtube videos that i made um it was part of my 30 day shred series that i posted uh last month and there was a video there talking about how to stay lean while traveling a lot of the tips that are covered in that video would apply for a truck driver who's on the road so those are a few tips like say you can definitely uh, incorporate into your program and hopefully they do help all right let's see what else we got we've got ross is joining us uh sue eric dan joining us luz cruz joining us uh another one here I have an important question for me. Recently, I cut out all sugar from my diet, main, mainly from coffee. I notice I'm constantly hungry. Is this connected and normal? Hunger is an interesting one because as you get into a routine of regular exercise, as you actually start to lose body fat, your appetite is going to increase, right? Like the the better shape you're in the more active you are the higher your metabolic rate the more your appetite's going to increase what you need to focus on is controlling that appetite with good quality food and not giving into the processed junk food so you kind of need to make those habit changes where you think of resorting to the healthy stuff versus resorting to the processed junk foods now sugar uh, i personally don't have any processed sugar in my diet like I don't add sugar to coffee tea or, or food or anything like that the only sugar that I get would be what is naturally found in the food like I eat, do eat a lot of fruit so I get natural fruit sugar that way of course if even in vegetables there's natural sugars through that as well but I purposely don't add any sugar and even if I'm having things like condiments or sauces or whatever I try and go with the ones that have the lowest sugar so for example like uh, sh sugar-free ketchup um, uh, salsa sauce uh, soy sauce mustard uh, things like that that are naturally low in sugar great way to add some extra flavor to your food without extra calories uh, those things can go a long way uh, different spices like of course salt and pepper garlic ginger various herbs and stuff like that you can add to your food to add a lot of flavor without a lot of extra sugar and calories but um, yeah, you, you will find your, your hunger will fluctuate. And, of course, as you start eating cleaner, as you start getting into a consistent habit of working out, uh, you'll probably notice your appetite will spike, will go up. But what you want to do, again, is focus on fueling that, controlling that with the good quality stuff. And there, there's nothing wrong with feeling hungry, right? There's there's nothing wrong with that. It's just what are you, get, what are you f satisfying that hunger with? That's what's going to make or break your progress. So uh, I find the leaner I get, the hungrier I get. But again, if, if you keep fueling it with good quality food, 
you can still make progress in terms of building muscle, burning fat, and maintaining a lean physique. So I have something in my eye there. All right. Kyle is joining us. Let's see what else. Wayward work, Woodworker was doing the five-day Lose Your Gut Challenge. He said it was a lot of fun. We have Paul joining us. All right, what's Paul got to say? Uh, da, da, da. Hello, what do you think about working out versus working in agriculture or construction and heavy work? Does this type of... Does this type of work, I guess he means, develop muscle or is it just stamina? Many people say working builds muscle too. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you can still build muscle and, and improve your fitness level and, and work capacity through good old-fashioned hard work. And, and honestly, some of the strongest people that I know in, in terms of just brute strength don't even go to the gym. But they do heavy old-fashioned hard work. Uh, like mechanics, people who, uh, like carpenters and construction workers and people who do a lot of heavy work with their hands, you know, just, just good old-fashioned hard work and have been doing that their whole life. Uh, I've, I've seen some guys who are brutally strong, especially when it comes to like grip strength and just functional strength, like real-world strength, and, and it's, it did not come from going to the gym and lifting weights. It just came from good old-fashioned hard work. Now, the only downside to that is is a lot of times you're not really getting the, uh, the, the the fat burning or the aesthetic build that you would if you're focusing on actual bodybuilding type exercises in the gym, right? Like so, if you want a nice, uh, well balanced, well proportioned physique, you, you know you will need to isolate your body parts in the gym. You know, do certain exercises to to focus on the different areas that need the most prioritization. But good old fashioned hard work. Hey, don't knock it. I mean, if, if you have a physically demanding job, use that to your advantage, right? That can go a long way. But then when you're in the gym, you want to prioritize the areas that are not getting as much focus from your job. So, like, chances are you probably are not going to need to do a lot of direct grip or forearm work when you're in the gym because you're going to be getting that through through your, your job that you're doing. But maybe you want to do some isolation work for... For different areas like again chances are your back is probably going to get a lot of work if you're doing a lot of heavy lifting and, and carrying and stuff like that but you want to balance it out so again maybe do some work for, for your, your chest and your shoulders uh, you know exercises for your legs your abdominals things like that just to balance it out so it, it, it does help but again it, it's not it's not a perfect plan put it that way right you still need to, to focus on a well-balanced routine in the gym uh so's or sues eric s-o-o-s sues i guess it is says does blood restriction work for muscle gain i've made some videos about blood flow restriction workouts and i have had good results with it like you will get a crazy pump in my case i really only focused on it for arm training and I did get some ridiculous muscle pumps by using blood flow restriction training. Uh, it, it, is it a must? Like, do you have to use it in order to make progress? No. I mean, you can still make progress just by being consistent with your workouts. But it's another tool in the toolbox. Look at it that way. You know, so if you find it hard to get a good mind-muscle connection or you find it hard to get a good pump, especially in your arms, and you'd really want to just try something different to spur on some new growth, then hey, yeah, blood flow restriction training is, is probably another tool that you can use. I, I throw them in there occasionally, but it's it's not a staple in my workout. Um, the, the only dr the drawback to, to blood flow restriction is you're not going to be able to lift as heavy. So if your main goal is is like strength or power building, uh, you'll, you'll be stronger and actually lift heavier without it because you, you get better blood flow and better circulation, obviously, without blood flow restriction. So you'll be able to lift heavier. But from a muscle pump point of view, you will get a better pump with blood flow restriction. So like it's it's six of one, half a dozen of the other, right? It's again, it's just another tool that you have available. If you've never tried it before, give it a go and see how you like it. All right, uh, da, 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 let's see what we got. So the Wayward Woodworker is Rob. And Rob is one of the guys who came on board with our group coaching program now. So I'm going to be following along with him over the next four months. Thank you for mentioning that. Because I know a lot of times when people have their YouTube usernames, 
I have no idea who you are, right? I mean, we all have these anonymous usernames that we hide behind, but it's nice to actually put a real face and a real name behind your YouTube username. So thank you, Rob, for, for letting me know who I'm actually talking to. <laughs> Kyle is joining us, and he says, Is that challenge you mentioned exclusive to people in the U.S.? No, heck no. We've got guys from all over the globe. We've got a lot of guys from the U.K., We've got guys from Canada, we've got guys from the U.S., uh, we've got, um, I think there might be some from Australia as well. Uh, where else? I think that's pretty much the, the, the group we've got going on, primarily U.S., Canada, throughout the U.K., like Ireland, England, Scotland, those, those places. Um, and, and I think there's some from Australia as well. But yeah, I mean, if you have internet connection, you can do it. Like, that's the cool thing about the internet, right? You're not limited by geographical location. Uh, Paul's joining in. He says, does this type of work affect my gym training results? Uh, what was he talking I think, okay, he was talking about the construction. This recap here. So Paul was the one who asked about construction work. Uh, does that type of work affect gym training? It's going to have an impact on your recovery. I mean, if, if you are exerting a lot of physical effort doing your job and then you go to the gym I mean obviously you, you only have so much recovery ability so you may have to balance it out so you factor in more recovery time uh, between workouts so a, again it, it, there's not a one-size-fits-all answer because it really depends on your individual fitness level your work capacity and what it is that you're training for but you can still make it work right bottom line you can always make it work All right, Kyle says he would love to try this. All right. Uh, okay, if you're interested in, in trying out for the next Lose Your Gut Challenge, um, you can hit me up on Facebook. Again, join our, our private Facebook group. Uh, just search for Lee Hayward's Total Fitness Bodybuilding. Request to join the group. Or if you want, you can just email me personally at leeh at leehayward.com. Again, that is leeh at leehayward.com. And just uh, send me an email. Let me know that you're interested in the five-day challenge, or sorry, the, the Lose Your Gut Challenge, and we can, uh, you know, we can talk about it. Uh, let's see what else we got. And the, the, the challenge happens on Facebook. We got uh, Deddy joining us here, and he says he... Uh, he doesn't have Facebook. Well, look, Facebook is free to sign up for, first of all. So, I mean, if, if you're using that as an excuse to not participate in, in the Lose Your Gut Challenge, it's just, like, anybody, if you have internet connection, if, you, if, you're, if you're listening to me right now, you have the physical capabilities to log into Facebook and sign up for an account and join the challenge. Like, whether or not you like Facebook or social media or whatever, like... Put that small-minded thinking aside and just think of the bigger picture. Like, Facebook is such a brilliant platform for having this group coaching because they they provide everything there, right? They, they allow us to have that interaction, that community support, that, that you know, the, the membership site, if you will. It's all available through Facebook for free. I mean, if I had to try and, and duplicate what Facebook provides for free, it would cost me thousands of dollars in website developers. So if, if you want, if you're serious about this and you actually want to participate in the next Lose Your Gut Challenge, you need to have a Facebook account. And if you're too stubborn to set up a Facebook account, then sorry, you, you can't be part of the group, right? I mean, even if you just set up a, a Facebook account for the Lose Your Gut Challenge, right, you can do that. Like, you don't have to add every Tom, Dick, and Harry that you know to Facebook. You can like, literally just use it for the challenge and just have it as that alone, right? I know some people have done that. Uh, let's see what else we got. Scallon 121. Well, Scallon 1201 WWE. Man, who, who comes up with... Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to read your question. We've got a big old weird username there. I'm sure there's there's reasons behind your username. right? I, but I just don't... Anyway, the question. What can I do to keep myself healthy because I try to eat healthy, but every now and then I eat junk food or salty things even though I cut salt from my diet? You, look at the bigger picture. It's like the 80-20 rule. Like, 
you can... I eat junk food from time to time, right? I'm still able to move myself in the right direction towards my fitness goals. Like, a lot of people have this this mentality that it has to be all or nothing, right? If I can't do it perfectly, if I can't stick to a diet 100% of the time, absolutely clean, if I can't go to the gym every single day, then why bother at all? I'm just, right, I'm going to do it perfectly or I'm not going to do it at all. And the problem with that is nobody can do it perfectly. So if if you have this all or nothing mentality if and you can't do it all, guess what you're going to do? You're going to do nothing. And when you do nothing, guess what happens? You get no results, <laughs> right? So you have to change your mindset around this and realize that you don't have to be perfect to make progress. Sometimes good enough, but good enough consistently can still get you the results that you want, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. All right, next question here from First Revenge. Lee, can you explain how sodium works as a performance enhancer? I've got videos and blog posts on that. Just do a search either on YouTube for like Lee Hayward sodium and you should find those videos. If you go on YouTube or just go to my blog, leehayward.com, do a search for Lee Hayward sodium uh, and you'll find those videos. I've got several videos and several blog posts on it. So uh, I, if I were to talk about it now, I'd just be regurgitating what's already out there. Okay, let's see what else we've got. I've been following you since... Uh, first, I'm following since years. Thanks a lot. Okay, we have someone who's been following me for years. I appreciate the support. Um, are you a fan of 40% protein, 40% carb, 20% 20, 20 macro breakdown? Sort of. I, I, I try to have a balance of each. Ideally, I like to strive for one-third protein, one-third carbs, one-third fat. Now, it doesn't always work out that way. Some days you might be a little more in one or the other, but I personally try to have strive to have an equal balance between all three of the macros, and I find that when you do that, it works the best for most people. Like if, if you try to go to the extremes where you're cutting out food groups or you're cutting out macros, like some people say, well, I want to go keto and go low carb or zero carb. Or then you have some people say, well, I want to cut out all the fat. Or then you have others, you know, the, the vegans out there saying, well, let's cut out all the, the, the animal protein. I find if, if you have an imbalance where you try and, and drastically cut out one of the macronutrients, it usually doesn't work that well and it, re it creates imbalances and it just kind of throws things off right you for example like if you go low carb most people feel like crap on a low carb diet if you go extremely low fat a lot of times people find it very hard to get a lot of eating satisfaction with low fat and plus it can drive your blood sugar out of whack so I personally find for the majority of people now, of course, there's exceptions to all the rules, but for the majority of people, probably like at least 80% of the people out there will function and optimize their program by trying to have one-third protein, one-third carbs, one-third fat. That usually works for the majority of people. All right, let's see what else. Rafa is joining us. Alan is joining us. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, we had... Deddy's saying he's been following me since I did the beginner upper body workout about seven or eight years ago. Cool, man. I appreciate the support. Uh, where was I to? Uh, Rohan's joining us. He says, Lee, I took a break for nine months off the gym. Lost muscle size. How much will the muscle mem memory going to help me regain all the lost gains? Thanks. If you get back into consistent training again, you will regain muscle quicker the second time around than it took you to gain it initially. Again, the, the, the actual specifics are going to vary from person to person because there's so many variables, right? Like, I, I can't predict what you're going to do. I can't predict how, how consistent you're going to be with your workouts or your nutrition or your sleep or your lifestyle or any of that stuff. But the, the general rule of thumb is it's quicker and easier to regain lost muscle than it is to make those gains initially in the first place. All right, that's the simple answer. <laughs> Bottom line, you need to get your ass back in the gym, right? You need to get back on track again. And the thing that I'm going to recommend is try to pace yourself 
one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're coming back to the gym after a layoff or they're just getting started is they, they get themselves all motivated. They get all full of piss and vinegar and excitement and they end up doing too much too soon, either burning themselves out or getting injured or they, they, just, they just can't keep up with it. And when that happens, usually it's, it's, it's not a long-term solution. It's just a quick fad, a quick fix. And then before you know it, they're back to square one. They quit working out. They quit following their nutrition plan. And, of course, once you quit that, then the results go down to crapper, right? So that's why so many people are on and off, right? You, you talk to anybody when it comes to fitness and nutrition and stuff like that, and that's what, like, 90% of the people say, well, I've been on and off for years, right? I've been working out on and off for blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? Whatever you gain while you're on, you're going to lose while you're off. So this whole on and off approach is is kind of pointless because you're just spinning your wheels. You're not really going anywhere, right? If, if you want to make long-term progress and actually maintain it, you have to figure out a way to make this a lifestyle, something that you do consistently. I mean, it's just, just like anything. I mean, imagine if you, uh, you know like a student going to school and they went on and off, right? They, oh, I went to school for a year and then I took a couple of years off. And then I decided to go back to school for another year and I took another year or two off. Like, you're not going to make any progress, right? You're just, you're just spinning your wheels. Or like with your job or your career, imagine you work for a year and then you say, oh, I'm going to take the next year off, right? Like, you're not actually doing anything productive. Like, you're, whatever you progress you make while you're on, you're going to lose it while you're off. So in order to actually move forward, make some substantial changes, you have to find a way to be consistent over the long term. And again, like I mentioned before, it doesn't always have to be perfect. Sometimes good enough, but good enough consistently over the long term can move you in the right direction. Alrighty, let's see what else we've got. Got a lot of people who've been following me a long time. We got uh, Prisoner of the Highway says he's been following me for over five years. Cool, man. I appreciate the support. Will is joining in and he says, I started rowing for my college is rowing team, but I still want to do my regular gym routine with weights. If I up my calories, will that be enough for the extra exercise throughout the week? Mm, maybe, maybe not. <sighs> Again, I really don't know what your rowing workouts entail. But you have to factor in the recovery. Just calories alone will not make up for it. I mean, it'll help. Don't get me wrong. But you need to uh, you need to balance it out because we only have so much recovery. Like, if, to to kind of just give you an example, like let's just pretend we have a hundred units of recovery available. That doesn't mean you have a hundred units to dedicate to rowing and a hundred units to get, dedicate to weight training. It means you have a hundred units total, right? I'm just using this as an example. Right, So let's just say you're dedicating half your energy to rowing, then of course you have half your energy you can dedicate to weight training. So you have to find some healthy balance in there that allows you to make progress and to, to still recover and, and move forward. So you can absolutely use that to your advantage. I mean, just from a practical point of view, if you're doing a lot of rowing, then that's a lot of cardiovascular exercise so you're probably not going to need to do much extra cardio besides your your rowing workouts it's going to be a lot of back workouts you know a lot of work for the for the pulling muscles you know the, the back the arms so you're probably not going to need to focus as heavily on those body parts in the gym but I would go to the gym and focus on the other areas so in the case like making sure that you're balancing out your pressing muscles with all that rowing work that you're doing uh, make sure that you're getting adequate work for the legs in there and, and to uh, improve your mobility and your flexibility so that you don't develop imbalances. Because sometimes when you're doing a lot of repetitive movements, uh, you can get those uh, imbalances. And sometimes that leads to things like tendonitis or joint pain from that repetitive movement pattern over and over again. So you want to make sure that you balance out uh, your, your workouts accordingly so that it's complementary to what you're doing with your rowing. All right, we, who else we got joining in? Steve M. is joining us. Would you recommend increasing weight after each set rather than doing drop sets? I enjoy doing leg extensions this way with near failure first set, then failure on the third set. Let me read that again. Would you recommend increasing weight after each set rather than doing drop sets? I enjoy doing leg extensions this way with nearer failure on first set than failure on the third set. 
honestly, you can make any type of set and rep pattern work as long as you're consistent with it. This is something that, that I, I personally vary and in, in, in change in my workouts. Like I might have a program in place where I'm doing a particular set and rep pattern and then I might change it up. I mean, I, I, I don't believe that there's a one size or one perfect program. Right? This is something that you can experiment with. And, and it, it's fun to experiment with different workout programs because it keeps it exciting and, and, and fresh. I mean, if you're always doing the same thing over and over again, eventually what's going to happen is your body's going to adapt and plateau and you're probably going to get bored of doing the same thing over and over again. So your set and rep patterns, that's a, another variable that you have at your disposable that you can, you can vary. So like sometimes I might do um, you know, drop sets. Other times I might just do like uh, straight sets. Sometimes I might do them in a pyramid fashion. You know, start off light and then add weight at each set while dropping the reps. Sometimes I'll even do an up and down pyramid where you actually, excuse me, pyramid your way up and then do drop sets on the way down. Sometimes I might do something like a German volume training, do 10 sets of 10, or maybe a five by five program. Like, it's not that one is right or wrong, better or worse. It's just you have all these different programs available. Just pick one, stick with it, milk that thing for what it's worth and then when you find that your progress is starting to plateau or you're just getting bored and you want to change it up then do so all right it's it's not like the the most important thing is consistency over the long term that's that's more important than oh should i do this or that or or, or how how many reps like honestly it really doesn't matter as long as you're consistent over the long term like if, if you are pushing yourself consistently training in a progressive overload fashion you can make progress with a gazillion different programs, different, gazillion different set and rep patterns. I mean, you, you look at all the, the top level bodybuilders. Like, I'll give you a prime example, like famous examples. Remember, like back in the day, Arnold Schwarzenegger was famous with his high volume, 20 set per body part, six days a week workouts. And then his arch rival on the other extreme, Mike Menser, with his high intensity, low volume, heavy duty workouts. Both guys were world-class professional bodybuilders at the top of their game, competing on the Olympia stage. Both had very impressive muscular physiques, and they had completely opposing programs, right? It, so it, you can make progress with all kinds of different programs. It's not like one is better or worse or whatever. It's just what do you want to do? What's right for you at this stage of the game? And just stick with it. Be consistent with it. Make that thing work, right? I, I personally like to vary it up. Right? So I don't have a, a, a particular favorite. Like sometimes I do like to do high intensity, low volume workouts. Other times I like to go in there and pump the crap out of it and do high volume workouts, right? I mean, that, that's, that's the, the, the joy of, of working out is it doesn't always have to be the same thing over and over again. You have so much variety and you can have fun with it. All right, let's move on. Let's see what else. All right, what can I do to keep my... Uh, I think that was the same question again. I think that was the same question. Maybe I, I was just... I, that was a repeat. Okay. Uh, Will saying... Okay, actually, let's see. All right, he's replying to somebody else. Never mind, I'm just going to move down. To... Dragos is joining us and he says recently when I go to the end of every workout I tend to get strong vomiting sensations and dizziness does this mean I'm overtraining not necessarily um, it means you probably got a lot of lactic acid build up in your body um, I used to experience this when I was younger when I was first getting started with my workouts I guess I never had the the same tolerance or the same work capacity and sometimes when I would do uh, intense workouts I would get that nauseous feeling afterwards and what I would recommend in your case one just give yourself more rest time between sets so like wh whatever it is you normally rest let's just say you average one minute rest in between sets bump it up to two minutes rest in between sets that extra rest time will allow your body to process and, and utilize the lactic acid that, that's being circulated. So it'll help your body to clear out that excess lactic acid that's being produced. Because if, if you keep pushing yourself and, and with, with um, short rest periods, 
it, it accumulates. You get a lot of lactic acid, and that can make you feel nauseous and, and, and give you that upset stomach sick feeling. So longer rest periods. Uh, also, stopping your sets a, sh a rep or two shy of failure. Right? You don't need to go in there and kill yourself in the gym. Focus on a strict form, getting a good muscular contraction, really squeezing and contracting your muscles with each repetition. But it's okay to actually stop a rep or two shy of failure. And the, the true definition of failure is the point where you can't complete another repetition with good form. It's not the point at which you can't move the weight at all. Like a lot of times, let's just use like bicep curls for example. You see guys in the gym and they're doing their bicep curls and they start swinging and swinging and heaving. Well, yes, they're physically moving the weight when they're swinging and heaving, but they've long gone beyond failure because now their form is breaking down and, and they're not using proper exercise form. So failure is not the point at which you can't move the weight. It's the point at which your form breaks down and you can't perform another repetition with good form. So if you use proper form, strict contraction, uh, you will get the, you know a full contraction in the muscles way sooner and you won't have to push yourself to that extreme limits where you actually are getting yourself feeling sick and nauseous and dizzy afterwards right focus on quality not just quantity and again consistency is even more important again so I mean if, if you're getting sick from your workouts that's not going to allow you to be as consistent it's not going to allow you to enjoy the process as much and ultimately it's going to hinder your progress over the long term so you need to find a way to balance all this stuff out so that you can enjoy the process and make it a lifestyle that you actually stick with right like this whole like going balls to the wall intensity for a short term like that that's kind of pointless right you this is not a sprint to the finish it is a marathon you have to be in this for the long haul in order to really make progress and achieve the results that you want okay so so souk I can't even pronounce your name. S O S U K E. So Suki. So Suki. <laughs> Thoughts on eccentric muscle contraction. Is it worth lowering the weight down slowly than lifting it up quickly? Will I get better results than simply doing the usual pump? I recommend controlling the negative. Don't just drop the weight, but you don't have to over exaggerate the negative. Like, just keep the weight under control at all times. You know, make sure that you can feel it through the positive, make sure you can feel it through the negative, and that you're actually getting a good muscular contraction. Again, it's, it's another variable that you can experiment with. I mean, if, if you want to try going super slow with the negative and you find that that works for you, then, hey, be my guest. Go for it. Do it. But in my own case, and for most of the people that I coach, like, I don't get, them, I don't get too hung up on the whole tempo thing. Just focus on actually feeling the muscles working and using good form, making sure that you're in control of the weight at all times when you're lifting it and when you're lowering it, and that usually is, is, is good enough for most people. Uh, what else? We got Koja joining us. Strength workouts, then CrossFit workout of the day for conditioning. Question mark. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I, I guess so. I mean, I, I don't know if that's a, a question or, or, or a statement or, or what it is. Um, I'm not a big fan of CrossFit myself. I Not that, that I don't like the the theory of CrossFit. I, I do like the theory of the, the exercise variety and changing it up and, wor and working on different aspects of strength and conditioning, you know, from doing high repetition, you know, muscular endurance type training, as well as some heavy lifting in there. I do like how, how they have a lot of variety, but I'm not a big fan of taking people and pushing them beyond their limits, you know, with trying to do as many reps as possible and, and, and then pushing to the point where the form breaks down and still trying to get as many reps as possible. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that, and that's where a lot of the injuries come into play. But as far as CrossFit as a th the, the, the theory of training and the variety, I'm a huge fan of it. I think it's a great way to go about it, but you have to lift within your means and not get caught up in the the piss and vinegar of a CrossFit workout where, like, okay, you're training next to somebody else who's obviously in way better shape, and then you're trying to keep up with them. You know, like, you're just going to get injured. It's, you know, like, to give you an analogy, like, let's imagine, you know, you're, you're, you're in a race, like, let's say a, a car race or a motorcycle race or anything and you have an, a, a world-class racer 
and then you have a novice and the novice guy tries to go as fast as the world-class guy he's gonna crash right he's gonna crash and burn right you're not gonna be able to do it because you don't have the same abilities same thing when it comes to CrossFit if you try and just keep up with the group and you don't have the same level of work capacity and fitness and you just keep pushing yourself and you let your form go to crap and you're still going and going eventually something's gonna give right that's where a lot of the injuries come into play and I know a lot of people get their shit snapped up from doing CrossFit workouts right you need to lift within your means, right? You have to respect your body. So that, that that's something that I encourage regardless of what you do, whether it's strength workouts, CrossFit workouts, or whatever. Lift within your means and don't get caught up in what everybody else is doing. Your competition is, is yourself. You want to be better than the version of you, you know, better than your previous version of yourself, right? So keep a notepad, keep a journal, like a training journal, and your competition is to be better than you were before. That's it. As long as you're doing that, you're on the right track. Okay, what else have we got? <laughs> Alright, so Scallion1201 WWE Roman Reigns fangirl says her name is Elizabeth. Alright, so for in the future, <laughs> I'll call you Elizabeth. And it's a lot easier to say that than that big multi-word username that you have there. So anyway, welcome Elizabeth. Glad to have you joining in for the video chat. Ultra Dude is joining us. He says, What's up, Lee? I think you live in Canada. Whereabouts? I live in Newfoundland, East Coast Canada. Uh, Do Not Zed Katrina. That's the username. It says, I have a health question here. How much farting a day is too much? I hear people counting them because of health reasons. Seems ridiculous, but it might be serious. How much farting a day is too much? I don't count my farts, man. I don't know how... Like, I don't know. <laughs> well, according to scientists, you should only fart ten times a day. And if you fart more than ten times a day, then you're at risk of shiting your pants. Health professionals say you should wear dark colored underwear in order to cover up the farts that you do over the course of the day. I don't know, man. Jesus, if you're farting that much, like, change your shorts. He says, I'm farting on my way to the gym. I <laughs> he says, I'm farting my way buff. If, if, if you fart a lot, like, you think it's excessive, right? Like, it's a lot of farting, like a lot. Then one thing that I would recommend digestive enzymes and probiotics they can help your body to break down and digest the food that you eat because usually if you got a lot of gas it's your body is not fully breaking down digesting and absorbing the food that you eat so digestive enzymes can go a long way to helping with this uh, ones that I, I recommend um, oh shit what's the what's the link for them let me just let me see I just see if I can find it there uh, Give me a second here now. I'm trying to find them, the, the name of them. Go to biomasszymes.com. And what I'll do is I'll actually type in a link to the video chat. For those of you who are watching this video chat right now, I just typed in a link. For those of you who are watching this video chat right now and you have trouble with excessive farting, check out the link. But it, it's a specific type of digestive enzymes that are high in protease, which is the enzyme that helps your body to break down protein. And usually protein is the hardest macronutrient to break down, digest, and absorb. So sometimes if you switch your diet and you, you start increasing your protein intake and your body's not used to it and it doesn't, you know, you, you have to adapt to it, a lot of times you might get some gas and bloating in, in that transition. And if you've experienced that, supplementing with digestive enzymes and probiotics can definitely help. And wearing dark colored underwear will go a long way as well. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see what else we've got. Mr. Sikawa. Sikawa. Mr. Sikowitz. I think it is. Sikowitz. Lee, you look uh, in great shape. Cool glasses, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for noticing. 
And and I, I am trying to get in shape. I, I'm 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 trying to get to the point now where I maintain a relatively lean physique without struggling and without really trying to force it, because. Uh, one of the drawbacks that I used to have back in the day, I, I addressed this earlier in the chat, was when I was competing in bodybuilding, I always had the, the, the short-term, hardcore cutting mentality. And I would go on an extreme cutting diet for anywhere from three to six months at a time, get myself in contest shape, but then as soon as the contest was over, I'd just go back to my old eating habits and then regain all the weight back again. And that is a problem because... It, for, for lack of a better word, it was just yo-yo dieting, right? I'd be lose the weight, gain it all back, lose the weight, gain it all back. And I did that for years. So what I'm trying to do now is maintain a lean, healthy physique so that I can feel good year-round. And, and that's what I'm really focusing on. And, and my, my approach to, to diet, exercise, lifestyle is, is all geared around that. And quite honestly, I, I'm happy with the, the results, right? I mean, I'm not contest shredded or anything like that, but... But I'm able to maintain a, a relatively lean, comfortable physique, right? You know, right? Got a, got a bit of arms going on there, right? You know, like see, like some some visible abdominal definition going on. Granted, I'm not shredded. I still got a little bit of lower belly fat there, right? But you know, I can see my abs when I flex, <laughs> and that's I'm comfortable with that, right? I'm comfortable with having some some visible abdominal definition. Now, granted, it's not striated, shredded contest ready but i'm at the point where i'm comfortable enough that i can take my shirt off at you know if i'm at the pool or if i go to the beach or something like that and not be embarrassed by having a big old gut sticking out and that's what i want to uh, maintain and i've come up with a system now that i'm very happy with and i'm comfortable with and that's what i'm i'm really focusing that's my focus now is not the extreme hardcore cutting approach but how can you maintain a lean physique for life that's what I'm focusing on. All right, what else we got here? Tushar, good, good Roy, I think it is. Or, how many exercises should I do when I'm working out? For example, how many exercises should I do when I train back? That's going to depend on your individual fitness level, your goals. I, I really don't know. I'd need to know more about you. And, and, and your experience, your fitness level, all that kind of stuff. I, I Like, if you have someone who's brand new to working out, and then you have someone else who's been working out for 20 years, like, they are at two different levels. It's not like this. They, they're going to need a different approach based on their current fitness level and, of course, their goals and everything else. So I don't like to give these one-size-fits-all cookie-cutter answers say, oh, everybody should do three exercises or everybody should do four or everybody should not. no it, it depends on you right so i mean i i need to know more about you in order to give you a a, a realistic answer for that uh steve is joining us he said thanks i'll mix it up as you suggest good stuff glad to help uh flip master trainer i b f f is saying greetings i've been following you and vince for 10 years now and yet I have a school for future trainers. Many people ask me, do they really have to get people counting calories? Many won't do so. All right. Thanks for the support, man. That 10 years, that's, that's a long time. Uh, da -da -da, what else we got? Uh, okay, let's see. B E Z says, even on that subject, he tries to help the community. Lee, you're one of a kind. Nice tips on farting. Well, I'm not giving you tips on farting, but... <laughs> well, maybe I am. I, I did give you some tips on farting. Especially the underwear tips. Like, there's nothing, nothing worse than someone who farts a lot and then wants to wear tidy whities Because you're just going to have a skid mark right off the back of your tidy whities So you got to wear dark underwear if you fart a lot. That's my number one tip for people who fart. <laughs> Take that to heart. All right, what have we got here? Uh, Rob saying, on a push-pull full-body circuit workout, is it okay to switch the order of the exercises if a machine or bench isn't available? Yes, that's a great question, Rob. That's the, 
if, if you're training at a, a commercial gym and it's busy, very rare are you going to be able to go through every single exercise that you have outlined in your program in the right order based on what's on paper, right? You're, you're going to go in there and let's just say it's a, a push-pull workout, right? So you're maybe alternating a chest and back. And first exercise is bench press and then the next exercise is seated rows, right? I'm just, I don't know, I'm just plucking exercises here. But anyway, okay, so you do your bench press, and then next thing you know, you go over and you want to do a back exercise, and oh, somebody's using the seated row machine, all right? So what do you do? What I would do in that situation is just find another exercise in your program and do that instead. It, it really doesn't matter what order you go through as long as you go through all your different exercises. The only thing I'm going to caution you on is be aware of, of the order that you do your exercises in because that will impact your strength levels. Like if you do an exercise early in your workout, when you're fresh and, and full of energy, you're typically going to be stronger when doing that exercise. Versus if you do an exercise later in your workout, when you're already fatigued and you've expended a lot of energy, you're probably not going to be able to push yourself as heavy or get as many repetitions. So if, if one workout, for example, you do bench presses as your first exercise, and then the next, exer the next workout you do bench presses as your last exercise, well, obviously you're not going to be able to bench as much at the end of the workout as you could at the beginning. So just take that into consideration. It doesn't mean you're losing muscle or there's anything wrong with you or anything like that. It's just your natural energy fluctuations, right? You're stronger at the beginning of a workout, you're weaker at the end. So just take that into consideration. And it's okay to vary the order, you know, do certain exercises in different orders or whatever. As long as you do all your exercises, that really, that's all that matters. But just be aware of that because I've, I've had some people before follow a program and then they have to change their order and they're like, oh my God, what's wrong? Like uh, my, my bench is down 10 pounds because I did it at the end of the workout versus at the beginning. I said, that's normal. That happens to everybody, right? You're not going to be able to lift as heavy when you're tired. Duh, right? It's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not rocket science. It's common sense. But a lot of people who are new to working out probably don't realize that. So they're thinking that they should be able to lift the same weight regardless if they do the exercise first or last. And no, it doesn't work that way, right? You, you have to uh, just be aware of it. Now, I'm not saying that it's, it's not gonna, that it's gonna hinder your gains because it's not. As long as you're still training consistently, you're gonna make gains regardless, but just be aware of that. But that's, that's a great question. Man, people are still talking about farting. I'm just gonna leave the farting, like you guys can fart amongst yourselves. Um, what else we got there? Um, do you think that Frank Zane in his prime, ah, hold on, now the, the chat just jumped on me there when I was answering this question. Uh, where was it? Do you think Frank Zane in his prime had the best male physique of all time? The, go the guy looked like a Greek god. That's all relative to, to what your personal fancy is in terms of physiques. Um, I mean, I, yes, I, I, I admired Frank Zane, especially when he was in his prime. Definitely had nice, lean, athletic physique, but the best physique of all time you know i mean that's that's a kind of a bold statement i don't i don't know if i agree with that or not um so yeah we'll, we'll just leave it at that i mean like some of the the, the modern guys like a, a, the, an average like national level competitor or even you know like a, a pro level competitor today would smoke and crush the guys from you know back in the the, the pumping iron days not to take anything away from what the guys achieved back in the you know in the 60s and 70s and stuff like that, but it's the the sport has evolved, right? So I mean I, I don't I'm not going to say like somebody had the best physique of all time or whatever. I mean it's it's all relative to what you you personally fancy. As far as some of the physiques that I really admired myself, um, of course Arnold. I mean who who wasn't a fan of Arnold, right? Arnold stands out in my mind because he was the first real world bodybuilder that I've ever seen. You know, before then it, it was just like cartoon characters and, you know, reading comic books like He-Man and Superman and, and people who were, were cartoon characters, not real human beings. But Arnold Schwarzenegger was the first bodybuilder that, that I ever seen. And I remember seeing him in Conan the Barbarian. That was the movie that I seen and I was like, holy shit, like there's, there's a man who looks like a real life comic book superhero. So obviously that had a big impact on me. That's where I was just like, 
mind blown, right? Like, oh man, there, there's a person with muscles, real muscles, not cartoon muscles. And that had a big impact, and I wanted to look like Arnold. But throughout the years, I mean, I've admired a lot of different bodybuilders and physique competitors, but still, none are, are had that same initial, like, mind-blown impact of when I first seen Arnold, right? And, and I think a lot of people can probably relate to that. I mean, that's that's part of the reason why he's, he's you know, had the impact that he did in, in bodybuilding. All right, what else we got? Jay is asking, how do you cope with muscle soreness after lifting? Um, I have some videos on that. If you do a search for Lee Hayward, how to get rid of muscle soreness fast, I think you should find it. Um, it, it goes into a lot of detail, but uh, there's one particular strategy in that video where I talk about contrast showers, hot and cold water therapy, one of the best strategies you can use to get rid of muscle soreness. So again, just do a search for Lee Hayward, how to get rid of muscle soreness fast, and you should find that video on YouTube. We have Maddie Mustang joining us. Lee, how are you? I've been following and a subscriber since you were doing videos with Vince and Elliot, since you got your Camaro and way, way more. Awesome. I appreciate the support. And you know what? I'm still friends with Vince and Elliot. In fact, myself and Elliot did a video back last spring. Uh, I was down at Elliot's Strength Camp Gym, his new Strength Camp Gym in St. Petersburg. And it was an interesting video. Like, I, I first, I went there because I, I met up with Elliot the week before when I was down in Florida. We were down on vacation. And I said, yeah, hey, man, like, he actually offered. He said, you should come by the gym sometime. We'll, we'll shoot some videos. And I said, cool, we'll do that. So I texted him and and he said, yeah, let's let's meet up at the gym and, and we'll, we'll shoot some videos. And we got there and all it was is, is he had his videographer there and he turned on the camera and we basically just shot the shit for like 45 minutes. I mean, it turned out to be a really cool video and we got some awesome content, but it, it was totally off the cuff and we just had to just a conversation talking about everything and anything related to bodybuilding and nutrition and just the, the 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 fitness industry as a whole like our journey through the fitness industry and and different changes that we've went through over the years and and you know how how we've evolved as we've gotten older because i mean elliot's over 40 now i'm over 40 so i mean like your priorities change from like the the meathead bodybuilder just want to get as big and strong as possible to now actually wanting to live a long healthy life and be mobile and and healthy so it, it was a cool video and it's on Elliot's channel if you just do a search for Lee Hayward Elliot Hulse or whatever you, you'll find it there but it was it was one we did back in February and uh, it went like 45 minutes just a 45 minute conversation it would have been a great podcast but it actually happened to be a YouTube video but yeah it was a really cool one and uh uh, Vince, I actually was met up with Vince just uh, recently up at uh, uh, in Toronto this pa past August. I was up there for for a few days. Yeah, so I still stay in touch with those guys. Absolutely. Uh, what else we got? Does Lee is a savage remind you of anything? Seems you looked the same as ten years ago. Uh, you really don't get. Oh, that is savage. Awesome. I, I remember that. The first time myself and, and Vince Del Monte made a video, uh, I, th I think it was, a, yeah, it was the first time. And he was just, he was on the other end of the camera and he's like, this guy's a savage. This guy's a savage. Lee's a savage or something. I don't, and I was like, what the frick are you saying? Like, where's, what am I doing that's savage? I'm just here working out. But he kept saying, this guy's a savage. Look at him. He's a savage. And, and while he was videoing me. And if you actually go through and just look for some of our old videos, like these were videos that shot over 10 years ago. They were shot on a potato, like an old, the old original flip cam. Not the HD flip cam, but the old original shitty flip cam. Uh, but still, it was, it's fun to go back and watch those old videos, right? Because, I mean, that's where it all started, right? That was back in, back in the OG days of, of YouTube, for sure. But yeah, I, I remember that. And of course, that line stuck. Everybody was was making fun of that. And I'm like, the ironic thing is, like, I'm there's nothing savage about it. We're just in doing a, a very tame workout, of if anything. But for some reason, that word savage just stuck. All right. 
Uh, Roshan is joining us. He says, Howdy Lee, when's the next video coming out? I've got a new workout video in the works. My editor is piecing it together. Uh, should be, I, I'm, maybe Monday? Give I, I guess Monday would be a good time that I should be able to put that out. It's going to be the next video in the push-pull leg series, so it's going to be the pull video. Monday it should be online. And there's more talk of farting. People think I should start a farting group on Facebook. No, I'm... Man. You're, hi, it's Lee Hayward here. You're... you're, you're your, your, your fart coach. I don't know. I don't know. What would I call myself? I'm a professional farter, and I have dedicated a private Facebook group to people who like to fart. Uh, what else we got? Mark is joining us. What's the best free weight exercise to get a better peak in your biceps and why? I don't like this whole question of what's the best exercise because, quite honestly, you're not limited to one exercise. But to answer your question... To get better peaks on your biceps, I would recommend positions of flexion, where you do an exercise through the mid-range, through the fully stretched, and the peak contraction. So I'll give you an example. Uh, we can use free weights as an example. A standing barbell curl would be a good mid-range compound exercise for the biceps. Start with that. Then you would do a fully stretched exercise, some preacher curl variation. Could be a dumbbell preacher curl or uh, could be a barbell preacher curl, could even be an incline bench dumbbell preacher, or incline bench dumbbell curl, where you lean back and you actually get a stretch in your biceps in the bottom. Some exercise where you're stretching out the biceps. And then the final one would be a concentration curl where you'd work the peak contraction. And that combination of mid-range, fully stretched peak contraction, it's a fantastic way to work all the ranges of motion to get maximum development. And if, if you do a search for Lee Hayward positions of flexion, you will see some videos. I've got several videos there, including arm workouts, using this strategy. Uh, da -da -da -da. Thanks for the tips, Roshan. Awesome. Glad you appreciate it, guys. Jay is saying thank you. You're you're welcome. I'm glad you appreciate it. What are some good exercises to target your middle back? Deadlifts would be a fantastic exercise for that because basically you're going to hit all aspects of your back with the deadlift, especially the middle back. Um, Hyperextensions, another one that's really good for isolating the spinal erectors and working that middle back area. Um, those are some that I would definitely recommend. Good mornings, another good one for working that whole spinal erector middle back area. Uh, what else? Th those are three: the deadlifts, the good morning, and the the hyperextension. If you do those, you're gonna you're gonna target that middle back area. All right, I'm gonna get ready and clue it up. I think I'm almost to the end of the um, of the, uh, the the questions, which is pretty cool. Sometimes I don't get to the end of them, but I think I'm through. So we have Mr. Smith. What is your opinion on TRT for lifters over 35? It really depends on your own individual situation. This is something you, you sh like if, if you're going to go the TRT, which is testosterone replacement therapy or hormone replacement therapy, if you're going to go that route, talk to your doctor. Don't go messing around with it on your own, right? Like seriously, go to your doctor, get it checked out. And if you do have low testosterone, then you can look into hormone replacement therapy. And I actually have guys, coaching students who are on testosterone replacement therapy. Um, most of them are, are probably in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond, but there, there are a couple guys who are even younger. Like, I, I just one guy, I'm not going to mention any names now for, for privacy reasons, but one guy is in his mid 30s, just came on board as a new coaching student, and he actually has, you know, clinically low testosterone levels, and he's on hormone replacement therapy. And it, it, what it does is it just helps to optimize your, your hormone levels so that you can make proper gains. Like, it's not. A lot of people think if someone's taken hormone replacement therapy that they have to change their workouts or they have to do something differently or, or whatever. Nothing changes. Like the, the principles of diet, exercise, recovery, healthy lifestyle, all that stuff still applies regardless if someone's on hormone replacement therapy or not. It's just that if you have healthy levels of hormones so that you're not in the low testosterone category but now you're in the, the normal or the high testosterone category, now you're just going to make better progress. Like, you're going to actually see better results from the effort that you put into your diet and exercise. But 
it's it's not like you have to change it. Like a lot of people think, oh well, now that I'm taking hormone replacement therapy, now I got to train harder, or I got you know I can't get away with three workouts a week. Now I got to do six workouts a week, two hours a day. Like no, you don't need to do that shit. You just like you still do the same basic principles of diet, exercise, and all that. It's just that now you're you're actually going to get better results for the time that you invest, right? You're going to help. To, you're going to see better results for your efforts. That's it, you know. And of course, you want to follow up with your doctor to get the regular blood work to make sure that everything's okay, that you're not, you know, you're, you're too high or too low or it's throwing your cholesterol out of whack or whatever. I mean, you need to follow up with regular blood work. Like, just don't haphazardly do this. You know, it, it's, it's seri- it is a serious topic and it needs medical professional help if you are going to go that route. All right, what else? Jess, okay, a couple more questions come through. This Shit, they're still coming through. <laughs> I mean, it's all good. This is what it's all about, but I'm going to get ready and clue it up now because I'm sure we've gone for over an hour. How long have we been going on this? Hour and 16 minutes, really? Holy sugar, shit, shampoo, shine. I go for a long time. Who else can talk for an hour and 16 minutes by themselves? <laughs> all right, three more questions, and then I'm going to clue it up. So this is Jesse. How do we incorporate deadlifts into your max effort workout? Which, like, man, what do you mean? Uh, how, like, dead, the deadlift could be a max effort exercise in your max effort workout if you want. If, if you're referring to, like, the, the, the typical, like, the, the West Side Barbell template of training where you cycle your max effort exercises, deadlifts could actually be one of your max effort exercises for a phase. Like, you could do it for th- three to anywhere from three to six weeks, depending on how your body progresses. But that could be your max effort exercise. Uh, if you want, uh, yeah, that, that's how I would do it. So you would actually work on that exercise and try to hit some new personal records week after week after week until you hit a plateau. So you could actually just swap that out. Like I know, I know like a lot of times people are doing some sort of squat variation as their max effort exercise on the, the squat slash deadlift day. But you could actually do just a straight up deadlift for your max effort exercise as well i've done that in the past where i've gone through phases where all right for the next say three weeks boom we're we're just going to hammer the deadlift as our main exercise and just try and get as strong as we can in that exercise over the next several weeks and then once your, your strength starts to plateau then you can swap it out and do another variation maybe a squat variation or a good morning variation or whatever um jay says i broke some ribs last week so leaving the gym alone for a while can't wait to get back to it that sucks i've personally never broke a rib but my wife patricia she broke ribs before so i I can relate to how painful and, and how big of a setback that can be so take it easy my friend let yourself heal up your recovery is more important at this stage than than trying to get into the gym However, with that being said, you could probably still do some low-intensity exercise, just like general walking and activity to keep yourself healthy and mobile and get some blood flow and circulation throughout your body. That will help with your recovery more so than just doing nothing. Like, I would rather you walk on a daily basis, even if it's just several short little walks throughout the day, versus just sitting your ass on the couch doing nothing. Because sometimes doing nothing is, is actually... Uh, the the slowest and hardest way to recover just gentle exercise and getting some blood flow and circulation throughout your body does speed up the process so lego in mind is saying i'm liking the union jack t-shirt thanks my friend uh dragos is saying uh great another great question then how do you target the part of the triceps that can be seen from behind right over the elbow same thing I would apply for triceps, as I just mentioned, for biceps. Positions of flexion would be the best way to go about it. So a mid-range tricep exercise could be something like a close grip bench press or maybe um, a dip of some sort of like that, just a big mass building compound tricep exercise. And then for your stretch, you could probably do like some variation of a skull crusher or an overhead dumbbell extension where you really let the dumbbell sink down and get a good stretch in the bottom. And then for your peak contraction exercise, probably a kickback of some variation or maybe a rope pushdown where you really get a good peak contraction in the triceps. Again, do a search for Lee Hayward positions of flexion. And if you want like Lee Hayward position of flexion arm workout and you will see examples for biceps and triceps. All right, one more question then I'm cluing it up. 
Okay, boss. Great live. See you next week. Oh, that wasn't even a question. It was just someone signing off. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a great way to clue up the video chat. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I know we uh, had a lot of questions come through, and I definitely enjoy uh, doing these video chats. So what will happen is I will get the uh, replay of this posted up. I will also get the timestamps for all the different questions posted in there as well. So if there's any particular thing that you would like to go back and review, uh, hopefully within the next 24 hours or thereabouts, there will be timestamps for all the different questions. And in the meantime, have yourself a fantastic weekend, and I look forward to chatting with you again next Friday. If you haven't already done so, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm sure you're already subscribed if you're watching this. Uh, also, make sure to follow me on our private Total Fitness Bodybuilding Facebook group. If you haven't already done so, head on over there, request to join the group, because throughout the week I'll be in there sharing tips and chatting and interacting. So head on over to the Total Fitness Bodybuilding Facebook group, and there you go. Have yourself a good one, and I will talk to you later. Over and out. <laughs>